Welcome back to our 17th episode of Flippin' Friday, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm so excited for today's build. So not only is this gonna be around a $450 budget build, and not only is it gonna look super baller for the price, but for this build, I actually decided to custom cut my own GPU backplate for our GTX 1650. It's gonna look amazing, especially at this budget price. I'm excited to see what you guys think of it. Before we get into that GPU backplate, I did actually spend $466 exactly for this build. And just like last week, there's no disclaimers or anything for this episode of Flippin' Friday. It's just all really good deals. And I kind of feel the need to address some of you in the comment section. If you go down to the description right now, I'll have links to everything that we're building with today. But you have to realize that those links are not gonna take you to the exact prices that I paid. I'm seeing a lot of people complain about that. PC flipping in general is just about being patient and sniping good deals. If you could just follow the exact deals that I get every single week, PC flipping wouldn't be a thing because people would just do that and they wouldn't buy a slightly overpriced PCs from us PC flippers. So keep that in mind. I would highly recommend clicking those links. And if you are trying to copy a build like this, then just click those like every day, maybe multiple times per day, and you'll eventually find a really good deal. But yeah, if you click them just one time, you're not gonna be able to find the exact same prices that I do. Before moving on though, we gotta take a quick second to thank and honestly rightfully promote today's video sponsor, Corsair, and specifically their new budget-friendly HS65 surround gaming headset. This certainly welcomed and affordable option from Corsair isn't skipping out on features despite the price. It's rocking Dolby Audio 7.1 surround sound for PC and Mac. It also has Sonarworks Sound ID technology, and I'm personally a huge fan of the overall build quality and feel with this foam and mesh ear cup design. It's also pretty cool that you can create a unique audio profile specifically how you like it. It works on pretty much every platform, including consoles like PS5, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. And there's even a white option that looks amazing as well. Grab your HS65 with the links down in the description and let Corsair know with me that we wanna see more budget products like this in the future. For the performance parts for today's build, I just wanna quickly highlight some of those deals. For the CPU, this is the Intel i3. 10105F. I actually bought this off of Mark from the Scattervolt YouTube channel. He was just posting a ton of parts for really good deals, so I paid $65 for this. I kind of felt bad stealing it from you guys, but I just can't resist the good deals. So speaking of good deals, another one was this Glowway RAM kit. This is usually one of the goats for budget white builds. Two by eight gigabytes clocked at 3,200 megahertz. This was only $50 on Amazon, where usually it's about 60 to $65. So loving that deal. For our motherboard, this was another Amazon warehouse deal. Just the Asus Prime B560 Plus. This is easily one of the best options for a budget all white build. Granted, most of this is silver, but this will look much better than just like an all black motherboard. Excited about that. And then finally for our graphics card, this is the Asus Phoenix GTX 1650. Pick this up on eBay for around $130. You can actually beat that deal at this point on eBay. I saw a couple of them selling for a little bit cheaper than that, but those are the performance parts. Now it's time to start building with them. Our motherboard could be prepped at this point, and honestly, this actually looks pretty solid, especially for our overall aesthetic of a white and black build, but I wanna try something a little differently today. I've been trying to figure out a way to customize the Intel 10th gen CPU cooler. As you guys know, I love custom painting the Ryzen stock coolers, and we can't really do that with Intel. So for today's build, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of our white vinyl, and I'm gonna try to trace around and just replace this Intel sticker with just some white carbon fiber vinyl. I think it'll look really cool. Obviously it's gonna be spinning, so like we're not gonna see a ton of detail, but just having a little bit of a white circle in there should take this that except at least one level on this one. We're about to find out though. I have no idea what this is gonna look like. I can't say that I'm a huge fan. I think it's a pretty good concept, but the fact that it's really, really difficult to perfectly cut a circle 
Like when this is not spinning, this kind of looks stupid. Like you can just see my very inaccurate circle cut there. When it's spinning, it actually probably would look pretty decent, but it, again, it's just not enough surface area for it to really matter. So we tried something new, but I think I'm gonna pull this off. I'm not a huge fan of how this looks. Now that the motherboard and our power supply are prepped, we'll talk in just a minute about why there's no cable extensions on here. Now we have the case, and this is actually a brand new Meta. I'm not sure how long this is gonna last as a Meta, but this is the Deepcool McCube 310. This is not a new case. I've used this before, even the micro ATX version, but the reason why it's so Meta right now is because it's been consistently going on sale for $39.99, AKA $40 over on Newegg. Absolutely no rebates or or like any codes or anything. It's just been $40, which is obnoxious for the price. It's hard to buy anything else at the budget range when this only costs 40. A lot of people are definitely gonna complain that there's no airflow. There is a little bit of some ventilation action going along the top and then the front. That is where the front fans are gonna be sucking in a little bit of air. With budget hardware like we're using today, airflow and cooling is definitely not going to be an issue. However, something to keep in mind if you're putting high-end hardware in here, but for today's build, it'll, it will be perfectly fine. It's gonna be awesome for $40. I really like the clean aesthetic of it. We also have the PSU cutout option, which is why we installed the vinyl. And yeah, the Deepcool McCube 310, $40. A lot of people in the exclusives, AKA the ZTT Discord server have been buying this lately. I would highly recommend checking it out. These fans here are from up here and I actually really like these. You can buy three of them for just $13, non RGB, but they're all white. I've been using these more and more in my budget, like white and black style of builds. But the problem is this case really needs seven of them because I don't know if you saw from that montage there, but we do have a black fan that the Deep Cool McCube came with down here at the bottom. Now I was debating about putting it in the middle, that way it would go like white, black, white, but I figured that this is the least seen fan inside this case, so that's why I put it on the bottom there. Let me know down in the comment section where you think I should have done that. But you could have also just bought nine of these fans and then you would have two extra. Maybe you put one on your CPU cooler or whatnot, but since I only had six fans to work with, this is what we came up with, but I really like the aesthetic of this. I think these white fans just kind of solidify the white and black color scheme that we're trying to go with. But now let's get this motherboard and then our graphics card in here. I can't wait for you to see this custom GPU backplate. We're almost done building here and of course the last part that we have is the graphics card and like I mentioned earlier we're not using PSU cable extensions because this GTX 1650 actually doesn't require any external power from the power supply and I'm not a big fan of using extensions whenever you're not going to have the cable coming from the graphics card because you would only have it for the 24 pin and the 8 pin, you just wouldn't see it too much. So what I decided to do instead of using white cable extensions was I built this custom DIY acrylic backplate and I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm dying to know what you guys think of it. It's definitely a little bit boring in my opinion. I wish I would have gotten some sort of white and black sticker on here just to give it some more contrast. But I do think that this looks a lot better than the black PCB here. So this is what it's gonna look like here, but I do wanna talk about the installation process real quickly because this only costs about 10 extra dollars into the build. I think I'm gonna do this from now on, but let me quickly explain to you how I did this before 
I install it. So the first thing that I did was I simply created my own stencil with a piece of paper tracing out the PCB. This backplate doesn't have to be super specific. It can just trace the outline of the most outer part of the PCB. So that was actually pretty easy. Then I transferred that stencil to the three millimeter white acrylic sheet. You can buy an acrylic sheet like this on Amazon for $20, but I'm only using half of it. So that will give us an extra acrylic sheet to use for the next build. And then once it was all traced out, I just took it out to my truck and cut it with the jigsaw. I've used this jigsaw for so many mods at this point. So pretty skilled with it, but this was a very basic cut. So no need to worry about that. And then once it was cut up and looking nice, all you had to do is install some double-sided stick tape. I just placed this on the screws, as you can see here. I wouldn't recommend taping on top of the PCB. You can get non-conductive tape, but if you just go on the screws, you should be pretty fine. And then here is what it's looking like. I'm actually really happy with it. But like I said, I feel like it needs some sort of sticker action. Let me know in the comment section what you're thinking about it. Now that the graphics card is in, this is my first time seeing it. And overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Honestly, I think it gives a nice white effect over here towards the middle of the build. If we didn't have this GPU backplate, and if we didn't have the white cable extensions like I was talking about earlier, this would just kind of be like a boring part of the build. And I try to balance the color throughout the entire build. Now, it is a little bit awkward here that this case is so big and the motherboard is so small. There's nothing going on over here. The McCube 310 does indeed have a GPU sag bracket here, which we definitely do not need for this GTX 1650. But yeah, overall for $450, I really like the aesthetic of it. It's not my best build, but not too bad, especially for the price. And speaking of the price, this is the full parts list and how it's looking. And I paid $466 for everything here. But do keep in mind that I got some pretty solid, but repeatable deals on the CPU, power supply, and of course that case. Not a single deal here was super crazy or anything, but this is indeed what a price to performance build would look like if you exercise some patience and really snipe the good deals. Because of the aesthetics and the custom GPU backplate, I honestly think you could probably get close to $700 for a build like this. So for most people, this should be a banger of a profit margin between $200 and $250. And if you want to see what the i3 10105F and GTX 1650 are capable of, Sam of course has us covered with a quick 10 game benchmarking run and here are the results. This is of course a pretty solid budget 1080p combo that is balanced well. And the cool thing is that the 10105F could indeed handle a little bit better of a GPU upgrade if you wanted to, and our CPU could actually be upgraded to like an Intel 11th Gen i5 or i7 as well. And just like always, if you're interested in picking up one of my builds, this will be for sale over on the ZaxTechDrift.com website. We have a huge launch coming up on August 1st, but I don't think this build is going to make it, but keep your eyes peeled if you are interested. If not, it'll be on the September 1st launch. But yeah, that's going to wrap up the 17th episode of Flippin' Friday. Make sure you click the playlist that's on the screen now to make sure you're fully caught up on the series. I'll see you guys in the next video.